This UCSD TV program is a presentation of University of California Television for educational and non commercial use only. This is a podcast of Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego. To learn more about how you can support Scripps, visit us online at scripps.ucsd.edu. Biologists have long sought new and foolproof ways to tell one animal species from another. Since Darwin, scientists have used appearance or reproductive compatibility to tell species apart, but the ability to make ironclad identifications has eluded them for centuries. For marine biologists, the quest for precision has been a special challenge because of the strong physical similarities that exist among many fish species. Now, scientists at Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego are pioneering a technique that is taking the mystery out of fish species identification. Scripps marine biology professors Ron Burton and Phil Hastings are combining DNA identification with barcoding technology, the same idea behind retail checkout stands everywhere. But instead of ringing up prices for milk or bread, biological barcoding compares animal DNA in tissue samples with stored genetic information about a specific species, creating the genetic equivalent of a fingerprint match. Burton and Hastings' FISH barcoding project is in the midst of building a database library one species at a time, a reference that promises to become a trove of information about evolutionary developments as it expands. More immediately, it could assist in the conservation of fish populations, including species threatened by extinction. Well, fish barcoding is a technique that we use to, by using molecular sequence data to identify either uh, products or samples of certain species uh, by, by matching the genetic sequence in that sample to a known genetic sequence taken from an organism that's been identified properly. It's analogous to uh, a supermarket barcode in that, in that it's a very simple way to make an identification, but it's different in that it's unique to each species and each species has a unique sequence for a certain gene of choice. The project here at Scripps Institution of Oceanography was uh, funded by California Sea Grant in order to build an archive of known genetic, of genetic sequences from known specimens of species for the all fishes in California. The Marine Vertebrates co Collection at Scripps has been involved in this project uh, largely as an archive of the materials that we've been collecting. So we archive here in the collection the specimen that the, known, that the tissue sample was taken from, and again, it's, it's here f basically to serve as a voucher to, for confirming identifications in the future. We also archive the tissue samples uh, here in the collection, and those are used for a variety of genetic studies uh, by researchers around the world. What we do in this lab is the actual DNA sequencing. Out of all of the DNA, we just amplify a short sequence, about 700 base pairs, uh, and make millions of copies of that. And those copies then are the results of that reaction are then cleaned up, uh, removing the uh, reactants, just keeping the DNA sequence of interest, and that DNA sequence is then put into a DNA sequencing reaction and automated sequencing follows. And so the end result is from each specimen, we get a DNA sequence that's approximately five to 700 base pairs long. And that is in fact the DNA barcode. Establishing a database of California fish species is giving researchers a level of understanding of fish evolution and relationships between fish that was not possible before fish barcodes. Okay, there are a number of scientific applications for this barcode, and, and among them are identification of early life history stages of fishes. It's actually very difficult to identify a, a fish larva to species, and that's especially true for fish eggs, which more or less all look alike. But using this genetic sequence, we can actually take something that has no morphologically distinct characters on it and identify it to species. The application of that is that, that by being able to monitor the uh, abundance of eggs and larvae, for instance at a marine reserve area, would give you some uh, insight into what, how effective their marine reserve is serving for a haven for reproduction in, in fishes that the, that the refuge is protecting. So we could identify, say, the production of eggs from a certain area uh, using this technique. 
the California Fish Barcode Project based at Scripps is contributing to broad barcoding efforts, hoping to apply barcodes to every fish species on the planet. Well, DNA barcoding has already been applied in several cases to uh, monitor what's being sold in fish markets and to uh, make sure that labeling is in fact uh, indicative of what the species composition is in a market. It also is important for the public to, uh, to make sure they're getting what they think they're getting. And the reason for this is in some cases, species in a market like red snapper, we could be seeing red snapper at many fish markets and that would lead someone to believe that the fish is actually very common when in fact what's being sold is a diversity of different species, some of which are common, some of which aren't, and so it can lead to a false impression about the abundance of species to the public. And so you can see where you would say, you know, red snapper is uh, in a decline, yet someone going to fish markets would say, how can it be in decline? Every market I go to has tons of red snapper to sell. Well, in fact, a lot of those fish have been shown not to actually be red snapper, but to be other sometimes related, sometimes less related species. Not only are fish being barcoded, but scientists around the world have undertaken the ambitious task of classifying every organism on the planet. Envisioning future devices capable of tapping into databases full of information, scientists involved in the International Barcode of Life project are hoping to put the natural world at our fingertips. Our project was actually conceived several years ago uh, to serve as a resource for the fishes of California. That's only one of several ongoing projects to create similar databases for other lineages of, of organisms. For example, there's uh, a group in England that's assembling a barcode for all mosquito species in the world. And that's actually is very important for disease, as, uh, monitoring disease vectors, et cetera. Well, a uh, former colleague of mine, Dan Jansen, has suggested that, uh, you know, what we ought to work towards is a small handheld unit that we could basically plug into any little piece of tissue and it would read back from the DNA barcode database. It would tell you what the sequence is, compare it to all existing sequences, and instantly inform us preferably not only what the species is, but give you a full range of information about that species, where it's found, what it does, and so on. And uh, we're getting to the point, given changes in technology all the time, where it's, it's not too far reaching to think that a little handheld device could give us a DNA sequence in a matter of, of a couple of minutes. This has been a presentation of Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego.